Hello, YouTube world. I appreciate you coming out. Thank you for giving me your time. Appreciate you coming to Cali's Take. If it's your first time, please like, subscribe. Also, the notification bell so you can get the newest and the bonus content we put out every day. Um, I just want to jump into this situation here. Um, the main thing is we should be talking about can the Clippers stave off elimination tonight? You know, against the Phoenix Suns. I mean, can the Clippers avoid being eliminated knowing being down 3-1? Can the Clippers, you know, sustain what they've been doing throughout these playoffs, which is, you know, being resilient and always coming back and fighting the way they always have. Now, in this series here, I did say in the beginning of this series, before this series started, that, you know, Phoenix is a different animal. Phoenix is a different you know, a uh, beast because now you're dealing with a three headed monster that you just really are overmatched by. Because, I mean, if you think about last game, 84 to 80 was the score. And I can't tell you the last time I've seen a game that was that low and the home team didn't win. When you hold the opposing team, which is the away team, to 84 points, you should beat them. You should win that game. Because you've done your job defensively or either they just shot so poorly that it just gave you the advantage and you, you you should win the game because you have the home crowd, the momentum, you have everything on your side. And I just find it overly shocking that the, you know, Clippers didn't find a way to pull that out, because to me, that was that was a <laughs> their best opportunity to tie the series. I mean, you hold Chris Paul and Devin Booker. They shot horrible. And like I said in a couple of videos ago, I mean, the score was 71 to 70 in that last game for I don't know how long, for at least three, four minutes. You know, it was it was a good little stretch where neither team was scoring. I mean, if the Clippers could have just found a way to, you know, take that lead, like be up by one point. I feel like it would have just propelled them to the victory or propelled them to, you know, do bigger and better things that game at the end to put them in position to win. But they didn't do those things. And we can talk about everything that should have, would have, could have happened, but it didn't. You know, so it's it's one of those situations where. You have to be acknowledgeable and, and think about it and look at it from a standpoint of the Clippers played really hard, but they look really gassed, you know, and um, I'm not making excuses for the Clippers, but that's what it looked like to me. And um, that's pretty much, you know, the reason why the Clippers lost. And you can blame it on a multitude of things. I will say this. I thought Paul George would play better. Uh, five for 20 is not going to cut it. Um, like I said, I understand fatigue is is a factor. I understand all that. But, you know, you're one of the, the final four teams remaining. So everybody that's playing still is fatigued and is hurt and is going through some type of injury and is tired, you know, all the above. But that's no excuse. You got to play better at home and you got to pull out a game like that. Like I said, I haven't seen an 84, 80 game in these playoffs or no playoffs that I could think of in the last couple of years anyway, that I've seen a score that low. And if it was that low, there's no way the home team doesn't pull out the victory. I mean, because like I said, when you hold a team down, like 20 points from their scoring average, you have to beat them. And the Clippers, they just really, really, you know what I'm saying, came up small when it was needed for them to come up big in this game, this last game that happened. Now, we can harp on a lot of things, but, and you know, a lot of people has been saying that, you know, Paul George, you know, has been playing good these last several games. And overall, he has, you know, I've seen, you know, he have 27, 15 rebounds. But honestly, if you if you break down the analytics and look at the shooting statistics, I mean, if you just just look at Paul George's first quarters in these last several games. And for the most part, they've been horrible. And these are the and, and th these are the things I've talked about when it comes to him where I've been critical of Paul George. And I understand Paul George is tired and fatigued, but like I said, none of that matters. It only matters if you win or you lose. That's all that matters. Nobody cares about excuses. Nobody wants to hear them, and neither do I. So my point is, you got to start off better. 
every these last several games I looked at, Paul George is starting off 0 for, you know, 0 for 5, 1 for 6, you know, 2 for 9, you know, um, 3 for 10 or 3 for 11. You know, it's like, you know, it, it just I don't know. It, he's just not coming prepared or I don't know. He's just he's just not putting the team on the on his back the way he should or could, you know. And I'm not um, saying that he can't do it because he definitely can. But when your best player, now that Kawhi is out, when your best player comes to the game and he's 0 for 5 and 2 for 7, that puts you in a bad situation because now you're trying to claw back in a game where you probably should be up and do this in a game where you have all the momentum. But even with the momentum you have, it's not good enough because... Your main player, your superstar, is is not showing up the way he's supposed to. I mean, I've seen games where Reggie Jackson, you know, a start out two for three, three for four, and Paul George is like one for six, one for seven. You can't win games like that because you're using so much energy trying to keep up and stay in the game rather than control the game. And, you know... This is what I've always said about Paul George. You know, I've always I always thought Paul George was a really talented player and he still is. You know, it's just he he has to step up when he needs to. And like I said before, and I'm saying it again, that game six versus Utah told me everything I need to know, because like I said, if it wasn't for Terrence Mann scoring at 39 points in that game six versus Utah, I don't think the Clippers would be here right now. I think the Clippers would have been at home watching the playoffs. But this is my point. Like, they just got to get more from their star player in Paul George. And he has to be more efficient. I mean, he can score 30 points, all that. But efficiency goes a long way in the game of basketball. Because if you're on fire and you're, you know, shooting at an efficient clip, it makes the defense rethink things. It makes the defense you know, second guess themselves and try to re-strategize when when calling timeouts, you know, during commercial breaks and things like that. But when they're it's like the Suns don't fear Paul George. It's like they don't fear anything he does. They don't fear what his outcome is in the game. They they just don't fear anything that he brings. And it's like when the other team, when the opposing team doesn't have any type of fear of the other team superstar it just doesn't work out for them and like I said it, it, when you look at Paul George he, he puts up the good numbers but the efficiency is not there so it's like the Suns know Paul George is going to have 30 points but it's going to take him 25 30 shots to get it and if that's the case that bodes well for the Suns and that plays right into their hands in their favor because usually they're a organized type scoring team usually they come up with you know good schemes you know, defensively, but they also, you know, run a lot of plays offensively that allows them to be an efficient team most of the time. So with Paul George struggling the way he is, you know, and then you got to look at it too. If Paul George does get it going or get it, you know, get hot or something like that, teams don't fear him from the free throw line either because, I mean, these last couple games, he he's missed some big free throws, some free throws that could have either tied the game, put them ahead, you know, or, you know, whatever it is. I mean, especially that game two, that game two, I think really, really, you know, what I'm saying, um, you know, really messed Paul George up, I think. You know, I think that game really got into his head. You know, even though he came back in game three and they did win game three, it just it just wasn't the same, though, you know, with Paul George. I, I just feel like Paul George kind of like mentally checked out after that. You know, that's just my opinion. But, you know, it's going to be hard, you know, in tonight's game, you know, going into tonight's game, you know, you're back in Phoenix, I believe. And, um you know, Chris Paul has a chance to not only close this out, but has a chance to go to his first NBA finals. And it's just going to be hard for the Clippers to overcome that. But I'm not saying the Clippers can't. I don't think nobody should count the Clippers out since they've been a really resilient team and they've shown a lot of promise and they've shown how great of a team they can be. You know, they can definitely, you know, steal a win tonight. And um, I definitely think it's possible. 
But I mean, it's hard to, you know, say right now because it's so early and, you know, it's the game isn't even, you know, the game isn't on and, you know, we won't know until the game is over with what happens. But, you know, it's going to be really tough, man, because like I said, if PG is going to struggle shooting five for 20, the Clippers don't have a chance because you got to understand is Chris Paul and the Suns going to shoot as bad as they did last game continuously in the series. I don't think so. The, are, I mean, are the Clippers going to shoot that bad the way they did last game? I don't think so either. But, you know, you got to take care of business at home. And the one thing I know or I've seen with the Suns throughout this whole season, they take care of business at home when they need to. And, you know, I know Monty Williams is telling the team, hey, we want to get to the finals. We want to prove to everybody we were the best team in the West the whole time. And they want to, you know, help Chris Paul get to the finals because he's a lot older and this is his last opportunity to get there. So, I mean, they're going to be pumped up. They're going to be riled up. So it's going to be tough for the Clippers, but the Clippers are going to have to try to make a way to, you know, um, make the right plays, push themselves, you know, be, you know, uh, be resilient. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a really, you know, bad situation for the Clippers because, if you look at these this series, I mean, game two, the DeAndre Ayton uh, uh, Valley Oop, the lob that Jay Crowder threw in, you know, a lot of people may find that to be controversial. You know, it should have been offensive goal 10 or, you know, it just shouldn't have counted or whatever. But even still, you could look at it from that standpoint. But Paul George missed two free throws that would have put them, the Clippers up by three. And I think they steal that game. You know, so you got to look at that in its entirety, you know, um, that hurt. And, you know, then this game four that just happened, I mean, both teams shot very poorly and the Clippers had Clippers were the home team and didn't win. You know, it's like those are demoralizing losses and they come back to hurt you after a while. So, you know, I hope that, you know, the Clippers have gotten over that. I hope Ty Lewis got in their head to the point where it's a new day, new game. And um, let's, you know, get back to the basics and do what we do best, because that's really the only way it's going to work. And they have to have contribution from everybody tonight. This is going to be one of those games where you're going to have to score. It's not going to be 84 to 80 this time, or at least I highly doubt it. That's not going to be the ending score. So tonight's game. If I had to predict a score, I'm going to go 106-102, you know, Clippers. It's going to be a close game. It's going to be a game where, you know, um, emotions are high and everything like that. But um, the Clippers are just going to have to fight back. And that's the only thing they can do. And they're going to have to try to at least get it, get, get, at least get it back to L.A. If they win the ninth game and get it back to L.A., it's going seven games. You know, and I, well, I believe it's going seven games if they win tonight's game. And, you know, I know game seven would be in Phoenix if that was to happen, which looks like a long shot right now. But, I mean, anything's possible. So I'm going to need the Clippers to, you know, buckle down, you know, and um, give everything you got because this is it. I mean, I hate to see their season come to an end because they've been such a resilient team and such a great team to watch in the playoffs. Um but I mean, hey, you know, we got to, I don't know. You just got to go out there and leave everything out on the floor. And that's the only thing the Clippers need to realize. Just try to get a game and leave everything out there on the floor. Try to get this game and take it back to L.A. and see what happens. So that's my um, take on the situation. But leave any comments in the comment section. Let me know what you think. We can talk about it like always. Kelly out.